Hello everyone, I'm Elijah and welcome to another video from The Rideshare Guy. In this video, we're going to be doing something a bit different. One of the things about the gig economy that is so appealing is that you can have flexibility over your earnings and make decent money while pursuing something else on the side and that something else can be producing more money. And one of the most popular ways of doing this is actually blogging. As y'all know, The Rideshare Guy is a very popular blog and some of y'all may be considering starting a blog too, but there are different questions you may have as far as how to monetize it, how to get started, as well as how to maintain it. In this video, we're going to be doing an interview of Tom Blake from This Online World to break down what is a good way to start a blog, maintain a blog, and also different ways to monetize a blog. So be sure to stay tuned, and if at any point you want to check out Tom's blog or YouTube channel, you can click the links in the description below or in the pinned comment. So let's go to the interview. All right, everyone. Welcome. This is Elijah with the uh, Rideshare Guy, and I'm very excited because we have a guest for this video. We're going to be uh, interviewing Tom Blake, and he has a blog. It's called This Online World, and he also has a pretty popular YouTube channel. It's under his name. Tom Blake. He's made several videos on passive income and also how to get a blog started online. And one thing that's critical in the gig economy is you're very, I'll say, and I'm not going to say incentivized, but it's important to look at other sources of income. And there's a lot of flexibility this gig offers you. And some people do turn to blogging for another source of income. And that has its own blueprint. And that's why I'm very excited to talk with uh, Tom. So Tom, how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing great, and, and you know, thanks, thanks so much for having me. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. In fact, um, I'm very looking. For, I'm looking forward to uh, this weather changing. It's been hot lately. But it's yeah, nice down in down in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and cool today, so I might have to slide some jogging in. But <laughs> right off the bat, a lot of gig workers have actually become interested in blogging. As you know, on the Rice Your Guy, we have a very popular blog. And I want, I want to ask you, what inspired you to go into the uh, blogging mix? Like, what was your inspiration for getting started? That's a, yeah, that's a great question, because I think usually you need that push to start something if it's a gig or if it's a blog. Uh, for me, it was during college, so I was flat broke at the time, you know, trying to figure out ways to make money. And I stumbled across something on Reddit called phone farming, which it was super crazy. You basically got all these old burner phones, and they were running ads all day on these reward apps and you'd earn bits of passive income. And at the time there was a lot of content creators talking about it, but there weren't any honest income reports about phone farming. So after I tried it and was kind of getting frustrated, I decided to make a blog about phone farming and that's how this online world started. And you know, it's not just about phones anymore and money making apps, but uh, that was the origin story for it. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty powerful origin story. And it uh, really started from a sincere place of uh, wanting to kind of help others in the sense of what you wanted to. And it evolved from there into a bigger blog, really kind of doing the same thing, but niching out in different directions, just really helping everyone. So that's a great origin story. I got to give compliments for actually following through on that because a lot of people, they uh, may have the idea, but they don't actually act on it. Yeah, that, thank you. That's, that means a lot. And definitely some similarities, I think, with you know, I've always liked Rideshare Guy because it's the same idea, you know, honest income reports, honest stuff about the gig economy and, you know, what people should expect. So it's, it's nice to help other people for sure. Yeah, uh, honesty is uh, very key because uh, we're kind of known as the blog that doesn't pull punches. We're very, uh, you know, very direct because we're sincere about helping drivers. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to uh, blogging, that does require a certain talent with your fingers called typing or writing. Mm -hmm. And I am kind of curious, like, um, do you do any type of a freelance writing for other blogs? Yeah, so that's one of the main perks, I think, of, of blogging in terms of a, a side hustle is that it opens a lot of doors that I think certain side hustles just can't realistically do. And so with blogging, what was nice is as this online world grew, I got in touch with other bloggers in the finance space. I got in touch with editors who, you know, run way larger websites, uh, than this online world. And so I'm currently writing for a few, uh, which it's, it's been nice. I actually uh, quit my job and became a full-time freelance writer slash blogger slash YouTuber kind of mix. Uh, so it's definitely 
one of those snowball effects where you get a few clients, or you get your name out there a little bit from a blog, and you, next thing you know, it's you know you have that option on the table a lot of the time to to go full time. Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, when we look deeper from the blog, it's another talent that you're monetizing, and that's the ability to uh, write, and that can be monetized in different ways. And like one way that you've uh, also monetized is also your, also freelance writing. And uh, drivers should take note of that because a lot of times we have skills that we're just kind of sitting on. So if you do have mm -hmm. skills with your fingers as far as typing, you know, the door is wide open to start a blog on something you're passionate about. And that can be the gateway to writing for other blogs, which can be another source of revenue. That's awesome. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think, it's, I think you nailed it. I mean, everyone has that secret talent or that kind of skill set, you know, that they, maybe they're not maximizing it. I think, I think you nailed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your channel has a lot of videos about a passive income. So as someone who drives for like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Uber Eats, like uh, what advice would you give to someone who really wants to start uh, making some passive income? Because driving for um, like these apps in the gig economy, it's awesome because you can hop in your car and make that quick 100, 200 bucks sometimes in a single day. But we also want to make sure that we are kind of building a a source of passive income to kind of balance that out. So what advice would you give there? Well, that, that's a great question. I think, I think it's important to definitely diversify uh, your income, but my take on it would be, there's really, you know, two main ways. And the main or the first method would be just keep it simple, keep it straightforward and decide on a portion of your earnings you're going to take and put that towards, you know, dividend paying stocks or dividend paying ETFs or just investing in general. However, you think you should invest for your own personal goals. Um, and, and that really is just a way to make sure you're taking a bit of that gig economy earnings and putting it towards the future into something that could grow. Um, so I, I think that's like the first one. Um, nothing, nothing too groundbreaking, but I think it, you know, it works. And the second would really be to, in a way, look at almost something like, you know, to turn to blogging or YouTubing or podcasting, something where you can share your experiences about the gig economy and ride sharing or whatever app you're working on and maybe help other people, you know, again, learn more about what to expect, how they can, you know, make more money per trip or make, you know, be more efficient uh, and kind of create value for people that in return, maybe generates passive income over time. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I know sometimes uh, passive income, people have this expectation of it, of it being like this huge glamorous thing, but Oftentimes, the most effective ways are kind of boring, and you yeah. kind of get it towards that. But um, <laughs> if we're being honest, boring is kind of uh, simple. And yeah, I mean, you can set it and forget it. And I don't. I would honestly rather just work and then put the money aside. Don't think about it. Don't stress about it. Don't even look at it um, that often. And then just let it do do its thing. You know, I I think you're right. Like it, we we want like flashy things, you know, and you know, exciting, you know paychecks coming in super fast but if it takes 10 or 20 years and or even longer like you know what that's i guess that's if it works it works yeah especially if you can keep focusing on the income in this case uh, uber lyft driver is a uh, people in the gig economy making money and just having some of that money put into a passive income stream like you mentioned like maybe with the stocks or the etfs it can kind of be some working on the background working in the background and it really kind of takes the load off your back you can just focus on making more money and it just snowballs. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Okay, so when it comes to uh, blogging, a lot of times we may have some uh, doubts on how to get started. And what would you say is uh, the biggest issue you encountered as far as uh, that thing that kind of made you hesitant to get started or like what, what barriers did you experience when you were getting started? That is, uh, that's definitely a great question because I think it is intimidating to say I'm going to just start a website about whatever I'm interested in and, you know, compete with everyone out there because blogging is incredibly competitive because, you know, websites have been around for decades at this point. So really the, the barrier I hit early on was after talking about phone farming on the blog for a while, I started branching out into a bunch of things, you know, cryptocurrencies and investing and making money and saving money. And a lot of the topics I honestly didn't feel like I was an expert in. I didn't feel like I had almost enough life experience in some ways to talk about. Like uh, you know, I was 21 at the time, I was talking about investing and saving and all this stuff. Like I was pretty new to it myself. Um, so really the turning point for me was when I 
became way more honest and transparent and only talked about things I was truly an expert in and truly felt like I understood better than most blogs or anyone I'd find on the internet. Uh, so I think that's really the key for beginner bloggers. It's, you know, don't pay too much attention at the start to the competition or the trending articles all the time. Just stick with what you know best and what you can be 100% honest and transparent about. And I think that goes a long way with readers if, uh, you know, if I had to give some advice. I, I could first say that's great advice because uh, here at the Rideshare Guy, everyone knows that um, we started covering uh, Rideshare News. And once you become an expert in a certain field, a lot of times uh, your fans or people who are reading your blog will start requesting if you can cover certain things. And once that starts happening, you kind of gradually start branching out. Mm -hmm. And it all started because you uh, niched down and really stuck with what you were solid in first, built that foundation, and you branched out from there. Um, for everyone uh, listening, that's a key thing to take note of because it really lays that foundation for things to really expand out of. You don't have to feel overwhelmed in the beginning that you have to cover everything. It actually is better to niche down than expand from there. Absolutely. I think, yeah, start small, and, you know, set your sights high and your goals high, but like work up to it, I guess, over and over time. Indeed. So when it comes to a blogging, there's kind of a stereotype that there's only like a one way to make money. And uh, we can tell you at the Rideshare Guy, that's a very natural, <laughs> a lot of ways you can make money, but they may not be known to everyone in terms of monetization. Like um, how many different ways would you say that you've made money with your blog? It's definitely, yeah, like you said, there's a number of ways to do it. And I think there's certainly ways that are more common than others. And then there's sneaky ones people don't always talk about. And then some kind of, you know, sneaky black hat stuff that, you know, the SEO guys really, really talk about, and it's kind of on the, the down low, but um, primarily what I do with this online world is I use uh, display ads to get just regular income coming in. So that's ads that pay per impression. Uh, so I'm with a company called Mediavine. Um, I also use affiliate links. So you'll see bloggers mention things like the Amazon affiliate program. Or I'm sure at the Rideshare guys, you, I'm sure I work with a bunch of different uh, gig economy apps and companies or credit cards or things like that. So I mean, you earn a percentage for products you recommend. Uh, a third would be sponsored posts. So if someone or if a company reaches out to you and they want to pay for a feature article on your site, that's also something you'll see a lot of bloggers do. Kind of gets sneaky because some bloggers don't always mark posts as sponsored and it's a lot of, you know, under the table kind of stuff going on, uh, which I definitely don't, don't like doing. Uh, I like to mark posts as being sponsored, but I think those are those are three main ways and then really the other ways i could think of would be things like you know turning your blog into a youtube channel and kind of getting some cross-platform uh, pollination going or things like that um, monetizing an email list you know there, there's a ton of ways out there i think and uh, i'm sure right here guys know even more about monetization than i do <laughs> yeah and um that's uh inspiring to hear you say that because that stereotype that you, you can only make uh, money from a blog one or two ways. It, it's pretty widespread when not only can you make money multiple ways from a blog, it can not also be used as a launching pad to go into other arenas, like you just said, like maybe YouTube or other ways of making money. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of crossing when it comes to other ways of making money and the blog can be the foundation of it. So that's powerful. Yeah, I think, I think it is pretty crazy that way. Like, I mean, you could always go the reverse, I'm sure. Like you could probably start a YouTube channel and then start a podcast or start a blog, but it is nice to have that one base that, you, like you said, it's a launching pad and then you choose what you want to do next when, when it's time to grow more. And I think it's, yeah, blogging is definitely great for that. Yeah. Um, I might have a personal bias, but I think there is a little SEO advantage mm -hmm. in starting a blog versus um, other things sometimes because uh, when you learn a little about SEO, it, it really can be a traffic booster to anything else you start doing, whether it be a podcast or a YouTube channel. That's actually a very good point. I, you know what? I take it back. Start the blog first and then uh, create the YouTube empire, create the podcast, get into that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so as far as um, people in the uh, gig economy, they might be inspiring to write a blog. What, like, what would you say is the first what advice would you give to an Uber or Lyft driver who's driving like uh, 40 hours a week, currently making money uh, as a, a gig economy worker? What mm -hmm. advice would you give to them if they wanted to start a blog? Like they listen to this like, all right, I'm pumped. 
I'm ready to start that blog. You know, what's the, the next logical step to do? So really, I think, and this is true, you know, if you work in the gig economy or you work full time or you have a lot of life responsibilities, I think it's easy to get burned out if you just jump in and you think, oh, I'm going to get this blog up and running in a week and it's going to be great. Um, not saying you can't do that, but I think developing a bit of a schedule and keeping it really light at the start and just staying consistent and focusing on consistent writing and publishing rather than, you know, making a thousand bucks in your first month as a blogger, because that, that just won't happen. Um, so yeah, pick, pick a writing schedule that works for you, even if it's only half an hour per day and you're just writing 500 words and, you know, piecing together an article throughout the week and just slowly get the blog going. And fo again, focus on that long-term consistent publishing and improving your writing and improving the site over time versus stressing about, you know, the first few months of monetization. Um, nothing wrong with waiting to monetize even, or to even not make any money for the first year of blogging. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time. So I think consistency is what matters. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we uh, definitely appreciate you coming on, Tom. We're going to leave uh, links to your YouTube channel and also your blog in the uh, description. So um, everyone be sure to check him out. He's got some uh, awesome content on passive income and also just uh, blogging in general. And I'm a consistent watcher, so I definitely recommend it. And we will catch y'all in the next video. Be safe and profitable, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for having me.